Okay, so let's start. Yeah, so just to give you a quick introduction about myself, my name is uh, Christopher Go, but just uh, feel free to just call me Chris. I'm a year two computer science student at NUS. And uh, if you want to write to me, you can just write to me at chris at nushackers.org. I'm also a core team member of the NUS of NUS Hackers. So yeah, occasionally we just uh, organize events such as this where we teach like random workshops to like, you know, get you guys interested in like making stuff. So just to let you guys like, in case you guys don't know what NUS Hackers is about, we are really about um, trying to like solve problems in elegant and ingenious ways, which a lot of people have the misconception that we are a cybersecurity focused group, but we are actually not interested in that type of cracking at all. We are interested in trying to get people to make things and like make things because they find it fun to do so. Okay, so um, we do that by organizing a lot of events and all our events are free and all our events are also open to anyone. Uh, doesn't matter whether you are not from computing, whether you are from any facu other faculty, whether you are from other universities, it doesn't matter. It's open to the public, open to anyone. So about Hacker School, Hacker School is um, one of our initiatives to get you started on programming and making stuff so that you can move on to start on your own projects. Because the thing is, uh, we know that sometimes, you know, it feels very daunting to start on your own projects. Because uh, sometimes, you know, when you want to build something, you, there's a lot of technical terms, you don't know how to get started. So we hope that we are the ones here who try to help you to bridge the learning curve so that you find it fun to build your own things. Okay, so about Hacker School, we are also not a coding boot camp. So we are not like those... Um, you know, those coding bookends outside that charge like a few thousand dollars just to teach you like how to write Python and etc. We are not that. So what this means to you is that, okay, today we only have two hours, right? And these two hours, basically my job here is to use these two hours to get you interested in building Telegram bots, which means that I might go a bit fast, number one. Number two is that uh, sometimes uh, things might feel a bit blur. You might not be exactly sure what's going on and that's completely fine. Okay, we just need to get the gist of what's going on and um, hopefully you'll be able to learn enough to just uh, find out more about things on your own. Okay, and also when I say we are not a coding bootcamp, it means that you shouldn't expect yourself, you know, at the end of a two hour workshop to suddenly be, be an expert at like programming or be an expert at like telegram bots. So I hope that sets like the expectation of what you can, ex what you can expect from hacker school essentially. Okay, so this slide is very weird. Okay, it's very weird that you see a feedback form slide at the front. So there's a reason why I'm putting it here. Do not, uh, yes, the recording will be uploaded. So I, I'm seeing some questions in the chat now. And yeah, this session is recorded and it will be uploaded on our YouTube channel. Yep, so do not fill out this feedback form now. The reason I'm putting this here is because, um, okay, usually we only show the feedback form link at the end of the session, right? And then the thing is, the people who stay at the end of the, to till the end of the session, they will usually be the ones who enjoy the session. So by showing this feedback form here, what I'm trying to, to say is, um, you know, if it just so happened that you find me so boring that you decide to like drop off in the middle of the workshop, just feel free to give me free feedback and let me know that um, what I'm doing well and what I'm not, not doing so well. But of course, yeah, only just um, reply to the feedback form when uh, the whole workshop is over, lah, okay? So the outline of what we are covering today, essentially, we are going to be covering what are Telegram bots, okay? And what are API calls and making API calls to the Telegram bot API. And um, so something that you have to take note is um, we are going to be teaching you how to make API calls and this might seem very manual to you, okay? But this is sort of like a prerequisite step before we move on to the fourth step, which is trying to create a Telegram bot with this uh, library that's called Python Telegram Bot. So this library makes it very easy for you to create a Telegram Bot. But the thing is, um, before we dive into this, I just want to ensure that you know we know how to walk before we start to run, okay? So these few parts might feel a bit manual, but it's necessary in helping us understand how to do this. So the prerequisite for this workshop is, um, you, you should have a basic, Python or basic programming knowledge. And basically what, what we need here today is actually very simple. We just need to know how to call functions and how to call, um, how to have like, how to use for loops essentially. And that's all. It's a, you don't really need a lot of like prerequisite knowledge and that's all we need to be able to go through this workshop. Okay, 
So things that won't be covered in depth, depth is like uh, how to host or deploy your own Telegram bot. So uh, if you came to this workshop um, trying to, you know, like learn how to like do this, you can just go and click on this link and look at it on your own. Okay, I won't be covering this in depth today. So um, the purpose of these two slides is just to tell you that, okay, if you are here and you are already someone who have like made a few Telegram bots or you are very familiar with Python Telegram bot, then perhaps this workshop might not be for you. Uh, this workshop is really just for beginners, for an introductory workshop to how to get started on writing Telegram bots. Okay. So let's start with Telegram bots. Telegram bots are essentially like, um, I mean, a lot of us here, we use Telegram, right? It's like a messaging app. And some of these um, apps, they have a lot of very interesting bots, such as like a trivia bot, or like a, you want to play Spy 4 in a group chat, or you want to play Werewolf in a group chat, you can have all these like weird bots, right? So the reason why we are able to do this is because Telegram offers a very easy to use API for developers, okay, like us, to create very interesting bots to serve our own needs. Okay, and that's what we're going to learn to make today. So the first thing is um, maybe outside of like this workshop or like even elsewhere, you keep hearing this term called API, okay? So what does API actually stand for? It means Application Programming Interface. Uh, yeah, I see you guys are like sharing the, the all the links, right? Actually, the, the links are just, at, at every slide, you see this bit.ly slash HS Telebot links. It links to the Google Docs, which sort of like contains all the links, like, okay? So don't need to feel like a lot of anxiety that you need to write down stuff or anything because I will provide everything to you. Uh, uh, like, or like I will just provide everything to you, like essentially, okay? So uh, API is essentially a contract that defines how separate software intermediaries interact with each other, okay? Or simply put, it's just a way for different programs to talk to each other. So the thing is, um, I, I'm sure a lot of you guys, uh, it, since you, you all like learn some programming, uh, I would classify the code that you guys wrote most of the time to be called like homework code, right? Homework code meaning you just like try to write code to like um, solve some problem, some programming problem, but yeah, your, your software doesn't have to interact with other software. But the thing is, uh, a lot of the software that people use in the real world they have to interact with different software. And I'll give an example about that later. And, and knowing how to use uh, and make API calls is a very important skill for all of us. Okay, so what an example of an API call. So, so I think all of us here, you would have used like safe entry before. So for example, when a user does a safe entry check-in, then what happens is that the app will make a sort of like a make an API call to like the safe entry backend and says that, hey, this guy, um, Christopher checked into like this shopping mall, right? Then the backend will receive it and perhaps they will do some saving of data or, or whatever. But the thing is, once the saving of data is down, done and the check-in was successful, then the backend will like respond and it will tell them that, tell the app that, okay, the check-in was successful and you can now display this thing, right? So over here, this is an example of different pieces of software talking to each other. Over here, safe entry is like its own independent software and like its own backend, the software that manages all the data is another piece of software. And they are just talking to each other via API calls. Okay. So the first thing we need to understand is a HTTP request. Okay. So the thing is a HTTP, uh, as we all know, is like, um, it's sort of like a protocol that the, the internet uses. It's, the, it's hypertext transfer protocol, if I'm not wrong. Okay, so basically it's a protocol that um, the internet uses to communicate with each other. And the thing is that uh, today we only need to know, actually we only need to know two, but the most common ones are these four HTTP requests. So there is get, there is post, there is put, and there is delete. And it's quite self-explanatory. So when you send a get request, you are trying to get some data. For example, does this restaurant have seats tomorrow? Okay, then when you want to post a data, you send a post request and what it does is it submits data. For example, you are trying to make a lunch reservation. So you want to like um, tell some other software that, okay, I want to make a lunch reservation. So you'll be posting data to tell them that you have an intention to like create a new lunch reservation. Okay, then the other two HTTP requests over here, you have put and delete. 
put essentially is just updating existing existing data and delete is just deleting data. All right. So actually, yeah, if you survive, survive until this point, right, this is like where most of the theory is, is enough already. It's, it's enough theory for you to be able to build this whole thing. Okay. So let's all just get started. Visit this link bit.ly slash hs telebots dash one. I think uh, a lot of you guys have already opened it up. And the thing is, when you guys open it up, please ensure that you click on file, save a copy in drive so that you'll be able to like um, save your own work in your own Google Drive and basically your own work will persist. Huh? Okay. So I will just like give like 30 seconds for you guys to open this collab notebook. Okay, you should see something like that. Okay, I'm gonna start right now. So, um, a lot of you guys probably have never used this platform before. So this platform is called Google Collab. Okay, essentially it's a place for you to run Python code. But the thing is this place for you to run Python code is um, it's actually quite interesting because your code actually runs on Google servers. Okay, and it makes it very easy for you to share your code. So when your code runs on the Google servers, right, it's actually perfect for teaching workshops like this because um, for me as a workshop instructor, I don't have to care whether you're using Windows, you're using Mac, or you're using like Linux or anything uh, because the code runs on Google server so I can just be very sure that it works, okay? And like there's no configuration needed, you can just immediately run code, okay? So these notebooks, we call them collab notebooks, but within the Python ecosystem, it's also called like IPython notebooks or Jupyter notebooks. Okay, so if you ever use these type of things before, they are, they are they are can be interchangeably used, but specifically collab notebooks are the ones that live on like Google Drive and Google plat Google's platform, like essentially. Okay, so what you realize here is that you see over here you have code and you have text. So this notebook allows you to like have text blocks, text blocks and code blocks to coexist, so you can very easily document your code. Okay. So how do we run code over here? Um, okay, by the way, you don't have to feel a, like there's a rush to follow whatever I'm doing now because uh, I actually do allocate time for you guys to like try this out. So just look at my screen now. Don't have to feel any like anxiety to like click on the buttons or anything. Okay, so for you to run code, just go to the code cell and press the play button. And then you see this allocating and connecting thing here. So what happens is like, um, Google is trying to give you one of their computers for you to run their code on. Okay, and right now it says connected and your code is run. So what we need to see here is that, okay, over here I run this line of Python code, some variable equals to five plus seven. And of course five plus seven is 12. But if I were to remove this, okay, this code wouldn't output anything. But if I put some variable, okay, the thing about collab notebook is it will always output the last line, the return value of the last line um, that you put it in. So at, at, at this moment, the last line is some variable, which is why you see 12 over here. Okay. Then even if like you're in another code cell, okay, you, you can still see the variables that you, you have used before. So over here, we have some variable defined here. This another code cell and it still sees 12. Okay. So first thing we want to do is we want to move on to try to make some API calls on our own. Okay. So API, like I said, is an application programming interface and yeah. So for us to make API calls, the first thing we need to do is we need to import a library. Okay. It's an external library called request. Request will help us to make API calls. It's one of the most popular uh, libraries in Python to make API calls. So you just need to run it. And yep, it's imported already. And the first task we are going to try to do here is want to query an API that give us random cat facts. Okay, so okay, so how I found this is uh, I basically just go for cat fact API, and then you see like this second link here is cat facts API. Okay, so the thing is uh, when you see this sort of APIs over here, right, you need to learn how to sort of like read it. Okay, so when you 
over here, what you see here is like, okay, for example, if you want to get a list of breeds, then you can call get on slash breeds. But if you want a random cat fact, you can call get on slash fact. Okay. So how does this look like? They even have a button for you to try it out over here. So you click on try it out. Then you, you will say execute. And what you get is uh, you get this, a cat has more bones than humans. Humans have two, six and blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, this looks a bit daunting, but essentially what it's trying to say is if you want to get a cat fact, go to slash fact. So if I go to cat fact dot, dot ninja and I type slash fact, okay, what you see is you see this um, response from the API. Okay, this is a response from the API and it gives me a random cat fact. If I were to refresh this, then you give me another cat fact, another cat fact again. Okay, and what we need to see here is that how does this um, API response actually look like? So this is when it's pretty printed, but when it's raw data, right, it's actually just like a string of um, like, um, how do I put it? It's a, it's a string of um, words that somehow represent some structure, okay, which I'm going to talk about. Okay, so the first thing first is, like I said, the, the end point here, okay, we always call the data source that we want to like get an API call from, we call it an endpoint. So we always call it an API endpoint. And the endpoint here is uh, like catfact.ninja slash fact, okay. So right now you want to send a get request. And when I send this, what happens is I will get a response that has a status code of 200. Okay, 200 is a HTTP status code. That means that the API call was successful. And what was the text that we've received? What you see here is that you see this, the around similar to what we saw earlier, like this, this thing over here, okay? So the thing is uh, API responses, they are typically encoded as JSON, okay? JavaScript object notation. And why JSON, right? Because um, like I said, the API calls are a very web related thing. And the thing is the whole web sort of like is running on, I mean, most of the web is sort of like running on JavaScript. So as a result, a lot of people just decided to use JavaScript object notation. Um, but what you need to know about JSON is that JSON is sort of like, a, it's just a data format. It's not specific to JavaScript, okay? It's just that JavaScript sort of popularized it. And now a lot of languages, even if you write Java, if you write um, uh, C++, they, all, they also can like read from JSON. So it's sort of like a data format and that's it, okay? So for us to like, Using in Python, we can call the JSON method to convert it to, to a dictionary. Okay. Right. So right now over here, I, I already have the response. If I were to call response.json, what you will get here is you will get this dictionary. Okay. For us to verify that it's actually a dictionary, I can just run this type. Okay. I call type on it and it tells me that it's a dictionary. So how do I extract the cat fact from this dictionary? I just need to call the fact attribute. And here you see, we will see that we have a string of the cat fact. And if I were to print it out, then it will just look like that. Okay. So, okay, later on when you go to your own notebooks, right, for you to just run the code up to you here, you can just click run. Um, run before. I think run before basically runs everything up to here. Okay. So, I mean, if you just want to like straight out run everything sequentially. Okay. So now that our prototyping and exploration is done, to, for us to piece it all up together, right? Piece it all up together. We can just sort of like define a function, like get cat fact. And it essentially just does the whole thing and just returns it. And then let me just run this. Okay, you see a one cat fact over here. And if I want to run it again, another cat fact. And if I want to run it again, yet another cat fact because Every time I run this function, it's like fetching a new cat fact. Okay, so now that we are, we sort of like um, learn how to do this. The first challenge I have for all of you guys right now is I want you to fetch some random dog facts. And the hint I have for you here is to try to first find a dog fact API. Okay, and we'll have the next five minutes for you to try this out. So just open this collab notebook and you can just try to explore everything we've done so far. And then you just try to solve this on your own. Okay. And let's go.
If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the chat.
All right, we will go through how to do this in like um, 30 seconds time. Okay, I'm going to start to go through how to do this. So uh, you, if you are looking at your own collab notebook, you can start to look at mine again. Okay, so how I will start is, first thing first, you have to go and look for a doc fact API. Okay, so over here, the first result I find over here is already a doc fact API. And I mean, there's quite a few, a, few, a few number of them. You can just choose whichever you want. But of course, uh, I'm trying to look for one that's like free and you don't have to like do some authentication. So this is free, okay? So over here, when you I, I look at this API, the first thing I'll look at is what's the endpoint, okay? And of course, over here you see live endpoint is this uh, docapi.kindav.com. And they have one path over here. It says slash API slash facts returns an object with doc facts, okay? So how I will do this is I'll just go to this link. Then I go to slash API slash facts and I'll just visit it. And what you see here is you have a doc fact. Okay, if I were to refresh it, another doc fact, which means we can just straight up use this as I like our endpoint. Okay, so the first thing that I will do is I will just request dot get and then this one will be saved in like your response. Then your response, it gives you 200 as expected because uh, 200 means that it works correctly. La. Okay, then what do we get over here? Response, not JSON. And for us to get the fact itself, we will just, um, because it's a dictionary, right now, right now it's already a dictionary. We can just sort of reference the fact with facts because it's the key of the, the doc fact. And right now it's an array and we want, we want the first one. So you just put the number zero. Okay, so right now, let me just uh, round this all up together and write a get dog fact. Basically it's just all this together. And suppose if I were to print uh, get dog fact now, you get one dog fact, you run it again, you get another one. And you run it again and you get another one. Okay, that's what you wanted to do. I hope that you guys are following so far. Uh, yeah, if I'm going like way too fast, just let me know. Or I'm going too slow, let me know as well. Just, I don't know, say in the chat or something. Okay, so the extension here is, how do I fetch 10 dog facts at once? Okay. So just now when I looked at this API, right, do you realize that there's something that over here that says parameters? Okay. So sometimes um, um sometimes when you want to like query an API, right, you actually they allow you to like, you know, like handle some knobs because you want to like customize the data you want to receive. So in this case, we can actually customize a parameter that says how many doc facts you want to receive. Okay. So over here, I can just put question mark number equals to 20. And then you get 20 doc facts. Okay, so how do I do this in Python then? For me to like submit a get request and yet still have, um, and yet still be able to like uh, put in this type of parameters, right? I can actually just create a new parameter object. Okay, this this is uh, uh, this is a dictionary again, and um, the parameter that I wanted to adjust is number. I want to set number to a higher number to just not not just one. So I can just put number, and then I assign it to like uh, fifteen maybe. Okay, and then when I send a get request, I can just put params equals to params. Okay, maybe I put this with an S so that it makes more sense. And let's just print the response.json. Okay, when I just fill in the parameter like that, it tells the endpoint that, okay, I'm still querying the same endpoint, but I want 15 facts instead. 
And what you see here is, you see like 15 cat facts. Yep. Okay. So why is this important? Okay. Why can't we just maybe like just, you know, put this in, put this whole function in like a for loop, right? Um, wait. Uh, oh, I... Yeah, why can't I just put this whole, this whole function in the for loop and just ask, just query the API 15 times? Okay, this, this works. It achieves the same thing. But a lot of times when you query an API, right, they actually don't want you like trying to like hog up so much of its resources. So basically, if you query it too many times, they might just say, okay, you, you are not allowed to query me anymore and I will not give you any more data. Okay, and the term for that is called rate limiting. Okay, rate limiting. Okay, so like when you try to query API, you always see like uh, there might be some limits at how fast you can query data. And because uh, other people who own like the, the data, they don't want you querying it too, querying, querying it too quickly or querying it too much. Okay, so sometimes for us to be more economical with like what the data we want to get, we should just like be very clear what we want to get and we can specify it in like the parameters. Okay, so next thing, what we've done over here so far, right, is we've been able to write a function to get like a dog fact and a cat fact, but that's not very useful for us, right? So what I'm going to show you guys here is something that's probably more useful, okay? Um, okay, so Jason asked a question. So params equals params allow, use, allow you to query more without being rate limited. Um, that's not, okay, I wouldn't say that's too accurate. Well, how I would interpret this as a, Okay, instead of sending 15 queries to get 15 cat facts, you just need to send one query and you get 15 cat facts. So sometimes people, when they don't, they don't want you using the API too much, right? They will, they will limit the number of queries you have. So like I said, it's really just about like trying to define very clearly the amount of data that you need. Yep, okay. So, um, okay, something that's more useful, right? So there's this, Data, okay, data.gov.sg. This is actually provided by GovTech. So data.gov.sg actually provides a lot of data about like Singapore related stuff. So for example, you want data about education, environment, you can all um, like just click around and you all, you all be there. You, you all be there. But you can also do something that's quite useful with data.gov because they provide a lot of APIs. Okay, so over here you see a developer portal, build something cool with our APIs. If you click on it, you will see like interesting stuff like um, pollutant standards index. So how clean your air is or like car park availability. Okay. Or even like taxi availability. So something that I thought, you know, would be fun for us to write today is how to find out the car park availability over here. Okay. So over here, you look at this, it's a get request again. And over here you have your endpoint. Okay. API.data.gov.sg and blah, 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 car park availability. Okay, so suppose if I click on try it out now, and if I were to execute it, um, okay, let's, let, yeah, if I were to click on execute, basically what you will see is, let me just zoom it in for you guys. You will see a lot of data about car parks, and you will say that, okay, this car park has 91 lots, and like there's zero lots available, and this car park number is HE12, and um, basically it has almost all the, I think HDB car parks in Singapore. And this API just gives you that type of data. So right now, what I want to do is, uh, this, this is real time, by the way. It's a uh, 6 of February and it's a uh, 1.38, which is like real time, okay? So we are going to try to query this API now and try to like get like um, the status of a car park at the moment. So first thing that we I want to do here is, uh, there's this link over here that says, uh, Detailed car park information can be found at this link over here. So if when, when I click it, um, for example, suppose right now I want to write a Telegram bot feature that um, lets me quickly find out maybe a car park near my house, whether there's any parking lots or not. So uh, for example, I live at I live at Bedok. Okay, so for example, I mean, I, I don't. For example, if I live at Bedok, there's this car park number called SL12. And I want to find out how many lots there are available there. Okay, so what I will do over here is, okay, again, the endpoint, I already put, put this here for you and I'll just query it. Okay, 
And of course, after I query, I, I didn't print it. So I don't know what's the status of it. And again, it tells me 200. So right now, let's see how the data looks like. Okay, response.json. And what you expect is, you see a lot and a lot of data is way too much for you to like browse and like process. So when we query APIs over here, right? One skill right, that we need to learn is like how to extract exactly the data that we want. Okay, so how we do this is, um, okay, so this is a bit, yeah, okay. It's like super long and okay, finally I'm, I'm, I'm up here again. Yeah, so over here, what you see is you, you, you need to sort of like a, have a rough gauge of like, what's the structure of this thing. So over here, you see that there's a key called items. Then inside items, the, it's an array. You, you know that it's an array because it's a square bracket and it's an array of different car park data. So we, we first try to break it down first. So at first you put items, then what you should see, you, sh you should see an array. Um, Yeah, this is a bit difficult to scroll, but what you see here is a car park data. It's an array of car park data. So suppose I put zero, then you I should still see car park data, then I should just car park data. And then I will still see a lot of stuff because right now all I all the all the stuff that I'm getting here is just like the car park info. Which means if I were to run Okay, so let me just put this in a variable or car park info equals to this. If I were to just get a length of this, what does this tell us? It tells us that there is 2073 car park information that I've just uh, retrieved from the API. Okay. So right now I want to just uh, get like the specific uh, car park that I was talking about, SL12, okay, SL12. So how do I find it? SL12, okay. Um, the first thing that I will look at is how each of this car park information looks like. So perhaps I'll just look at the first item. Okay, over here you see the first item, there's this car park number key and it tells you that it's HE12. And the one we're gonna look for is SL12. So how I will do this is for car park info in all car park info. Um, if yeah, if um if the car park info if the car park info and the car park number is equals to SL12. Then I'll just uh, print the car park info. Then I'll just break. Okay, I think it, wait, it's not working. Let me just change this to HE12. That was the first one we found, right? Yep, so the HE12 is here, but um. I think, okay, let's choose another car park. Probably that one didn't work because it didn't, there's no data about it or something. Let's try a TP48, okay? TP48. Uh, okay, uh, you guys don't need to feel very lost. Just uh, follow along with me, TP48. Yep, so right now I see this Topayo car park and it says that there is like 20 lots and zero lots available. Okay, so... This is as an example of how you can like possibly query an API to just like get the data that might be useful for you. Okay, you need to figure out the shape of the data. Then within the shape of the data, you need to crawl into like it and like just try to extract the data that you want. Okay. Oh, SL. Whoops, I think I made a typo. Yeah, let me try SL2. Hmm. Interesting, it still doesn't work. So yeah, sometimes you also, okay, so what are the things that we learned from here, right? Sometimes you can't expect the API to um, return like the like the most updated data all the time. Sometimes it might not have access to the data. So 
Yep. So HE12, then you will you'll find like a lot again. Okay. So that's how I would query the data.gov.sg API to like figure out the car park availability. Okay, so next up, what I'm gonna do is um I gonna I'm, I want you guys to open up this another this second collab notebook. Okay. This second collab notebook, and we'll be trying to make API calls to Telegram's bot API. Okay, I pasted a link in the in the chat. You can just click on it. And once you open it up, just do the same thing. Just click on file and like save a copy in drive. Okay, I'm gonna give like um, 30 more seconds for you guys to just uh, open this up. The slides are already available at the link. Um, let me just send the link again. Uh, Okay, so uh, just in case you guys are like a bit anxious because you guys couldn't really follow this carpark loss availability example, don't worry about it because uh, later in the third part, I actually have like this working function over here for you to just straight up use it. So don't have to feel very stressed that you need to like get this to figure this out as well, okay? And yeah, let me just begin. So what we want to do here is that for us to create a bot on Telegram, right? We actually need, need to talk to this guy, okay? There's this guy here, looks quite good, okay? This guy is called a bot father. So what you do is open up your Telegram and then you just uh, search for bot father and you will see this guy over here with a check mark beside. So this is like an official Telegram thingy. So what you want to do here is you want to say, oh, slash new bot. So it allows you to create a new bot. Then you need to give it a name. So suppose um, I can name it like a hacker school um, telegram bot, telegram, hacker school telegram. Then right now you need to choose like a username. So I can just put a HS telegram underscore bot. Okay, apparently this is already taken. So I can just uh, hacker school Yep. So right now I have a working uh, username, right? It's hacker school test underscore bot. So I've actually created a new bot. Okay. And there's something that's very important that you need, need to need over here, which is this uh, token. Okay. There's this token over here that will allow you to access the AP API, which is this uh, long string of like cryptic words. Okay. So you, you just need to copy this and you just need to put this in your code. Okay, so again, uh, you can just follow along what I'm doing now. Lah, okay, just look at my screen. So right now I copied my bot token over here. And when I, okay, uh, so again, I, I need to like import this and I need to like save my bot token. And then the thing is, um, I'm going to try to see how the Telegram bot API works. So what we usually do is we just open up the documentation. Okay, so let's look at the documentation. Each bot is given an authentication token when it's created, which is the one we saw just now. Okay, so for us to make a request to the Telegram bot API, okay, you you your endpoint basically they are trying to tell you that you need to put your bot token here, and you just need to put the method name that you want to call over here. Okay, so example that they gave is, uh, they have this like dummy bot token here, and then they call the get me function over here. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do the exact same thing. When I call, okay, wrong one. Let me just close this. Yep. When I call like this endpoint, 
Okay, right now this is my whole endpoint with my bot token that I created just now. And I call the request.get on the endpoint. So right now Telegram is like preparing a response for me and it tells me that, okay, my first name is Hacker School Telegram and like I'm a bot. Yeah, so right now we essentially have made an API call to Telegram. And that's how we are going to interface with Telegram to create our bots. Okay. So let's try to see if we can re receive our messages. Okay. I'm going to just send it a message. So how, how do you send the, your bot a message? Basically just search for its username. Or you can click on this thing over here or just search for the username. So like hacker school test underscore bot. Okay. So right now my bot is over here and I can talk to it. I can press on start. Then nothing happens. Okay. So let me just like say some other stuff like hello. Okay, so right now I'm gonna make a call to the endpoint that's get updates. And when I run this, okay, what it tells me is that there's one message from NUS hackers. And then there is another message from NUS hackers. Okay, so essentially the whole thing is working, it's receiving my messages. It's just that I'm not doing anything about it. Okay, right now what I want to do is, I'm going to make a post request to send myself a message. Over here, you see this um, ID, this ID over here, this string, this whole like bunch of numbers. This ID is essentially like the user ID of the Telegram account that I use to message this bot. Okay. So this ID represents the NUS hackers Telegram account, this guy. Okay. And, um, so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, use the send message endpoint. And when I, I, I'm going to send it a chat ID where I, I'm going to send it. Um, I'm going to ask it to send a message to this chat where the ID is myself. Okay, this is me. And I'm going to send the text that says, hello, this is a text message. And I'm going to request.post. Request.post uh, indicates that you're making a post request to this endpoint and with this data, okay? And I'm gonna just send it. And it says, okay, it has successfully sent a message. So let's just check whether we have received a message. And yep, over here, our bot just sent us a test message. Okay, if I were to run this another three times, one, two, and three. Another three more messages. Okay. So right now, essentially what I've just shown you is that we are able to just, um, we're able to just um, interface with the Telegram API to receive messages and to send messages. Okay. Um, okay. So Catherine has a question about how to find out our Telegram chat ID. Okay. So essentially what I did was I called the get updates endpoint, right? But for me to know my chat ID, I actually have to send a message to my bot first. Okay, I, I have to like, I send like hello, right? So for example, if I send like a LMAO, okay? If I send LMAO and I query the get updates endpoint again, what you will see here is, um, oh, there's someone who messaged this boy as well. T-T-Y-Y-C-C-C, okay. Uh, where's my message? Uh, let me just search for LMAO. Interesting, uh, why is it not working? Um, Yeah, basically this will, will just give you like um, all the messages you've received recently, okay? And then from this, you can tell like your ID because you are the account that sent a message to it and then it will tell you what's the ID of the account that sent a message. Can we, okay, so Clarence has a question that says, can we limit the get update commands to a particular time frame of messages? And the answer is definitely. So again, when you need to do these sort of things, right? Just go to the API documentation. You look at get updates. Okay. So over here, I'm at the get updates API documentation, and it tells me that um, limits the number of updates to be retrieved. So for example, if I want the last hundred updates, then I think I can just um, pass in a parameter that says limit equals to hundred. Or Mm, let me see what else you can configure. You can configure an offset, a timeout. Yep, I, but I think this is quite close to like what you want to get. 
Okay, so essentially when you want to like do certain funky stuff with your API, you should go and look at the documentation to find out what you can configure. Okay, so yeah, we are, we've managed to like send an API request to like Telegram and like receive a Telegram, no, like and receive Telegram messages on our own account. Um, for now, okay, so the thing is that uh, this actually feels super manual, right? Because you, you actually need to like uh, send your own request and everything. But in part three, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make use of this Python Telegram bot library, which makes it a lot easier for us to, to do this whole thing. Uh, we, we don't have to like keep doing it again and again now, okay? So for now, if you want to try, try this out, you can just try, try the above for now, or you can just go and have a short bio break. We can come back at like uh, 202. Okay, uh, 202, if you have any questions, you can ask now as well. Is there rate limiting to getting the updates? Um, good question. Does, does Telegram bot API have rate limits? Hmm, I'm actually, I'm not too sure if like there's any rate limits to Telegram API, but the thing is, uh, from what I know, because Telegram APIs, Telegram bots are very widely used and some, some bots are like in many, many groups, right? So it might be they don't really have too strict rate limits. Yeah. So for example, uh, API that have rate limits, right? I, I can show you this. Um, essentially like this cup up availability API, okay? Um, we recommend that this endpoint be caught every minute and you see, you see this over here? We recommend at this point, endpoint be caught every minute. And they also say at the bottom, if I'm not wrong, that there's a limit to how often it can be caught. Yep. Limited to 60 requests per minute per API key. Which um, I'm not sure why there's an API key thing here because we didn't use any API key and uh, yeah. Maybe if we like, if I make like seventy calls, it will like block me or something. Let's just let me, let's just give it a try then. Um, okay, so print. Let, let let me just try making API calls to that this cup of availability endpoint like very quickly. So for I range like suppose if I make 70 API calls. Yep, sometimes even API calls take a while to make because it actually has to send the information there uh, and send the information back. Um Yeah, so th there's actually ways to speed this up. Uh, if you want to, cause right now it's like running them one by one, right? You can actually run them parallelized, like um, asynchronously, la, but I mean, that's outside the scope of this, um, uh, this workshop, but there's actually ways to like, suppose if you really wanted to send like 70 API calls to the, at the same time, right? You can just parallelize them. You don't have to like run them uh, sequentially. Yeah, you're right. Probably not gonna hit 70 per minute because it's like, it's like taking one second per API call. Okay, so the lesson learned from here is, um. GovTech APIs can be hammered, but the thing is, um, so the thing is when you want to like use the APIs for your own consumption, right? You probably won't like hit, hit any rate li limits, but suppose if you were publishing like this uh, Telegram bot service um, that a lot of people are using at once, then it might be the case that, you know, um, a lot of users are using a bot at once and a lot of them just end up using the same command at once and it, it, the, the API just like doesn't give you data. 
right? Okay, so it submitted 70 API calls and all of them came back as 200, which means we were not really limited. Okay. Uh, one more minute before we continue. Okay, so for now, let's just open the third notebook. Okay, the third notebook, uh, Telegram bots three, and then, yep. And uh, if you want to access like all the previous notebooks or even the links to the slides, you can just go to this link as well. Everything is over here. hs-telebot-links. Okay, so just... um. Bots can't send message to bots. Are you trying to send a message to another bot? Like the ID you extracted, right? Perhaps the ID you extracted over here um, that you put in over here, right? It might be not your own ID. It might be the bot's ID. Uh, which link is un unaccessible? Hang on. Okay, um, interesting. Somehow this link isn't working. Let me just... Uh, yeah, so some, someone just reported to me that the hs-telebot-links isn't working. So I'm just going to like paste this over here. Okay, so we are at the third notebook for today. This is the third and the last one. Okay, we are quite on time, I guess. We are, yeah. So the thing is, uh, like I said, what we did just now, right? It was very manual because every time you want an update, you need to like uh, send a request. Every time you want to send a message, you have to send another request. There's, it feels like there's a lot of things you need to do, right? So whenever you try to make an API call uh, in like, for, especially for Python, right? The first thing you should look at is um, actually, is there any libraries that are already out there that, helps you to make the API calls or not, okay? And there is one for Python Telegram bot, okay? Which is this project over here. So this Python, te Python Telegram bot, it's a very popular project, 13K stars on GitHub. And what it essentially is, is a, okay, where is it? It's a wrapper around the, Py the Telegram bot API, okay? It's a wrapper around the Telegram bot API. Essentially what we were doing just now, we were doing it manually, right? They also do it manually, but they wrap it nicely so that we can easily use it. So when you see a, a package that's like that, right? You can just go and um, see how you can get started, okay? So over here, there's this get started section. So they will say that, oh, our wiki contains a lot of resources to get you started with using Python Telegram bot and like how to make your first bot. They have tutorials and stuff. So very easy to get started with this sort of libraries. Okay, so let's look at the getting started section. Um, getting started and yeah, tutorial your first bot. Okay, so essentially like, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you like a whole bunch of code over here, okay? Essentially what you see over here, you see a whole bunch of code that I've, I've already pasted over here, right? But all the code that I've pasted over here, right, is essentially just me copy pasting 
literally copy pasting all the code that's from this tutorial. Okay, so I'm just very gonna. I'm 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 not gonna read the whole tutorial to you lah. I'm just gonna very quickly tell you like what it's doing. Okay, so essentially it's um, you you first initialize the the library with your bot token. Okay, so I put a bot token here. You copy your bot token here, and then you initialize your library with the bot token. And then basically what it does is um, it has a whole bunch of functions. So for example, when you send like a start command, okay, when you send slash start, it will trigger this command handler. And this command handler will call the start function. And what does the start function do? The start, fun the start function asks the bot to send you a message that says, I'm a bot, please talk to me. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is... Um, Oh yeah, before I, I, I think I, I jump a bit uh, a bit too fast about this, but yeah, the thing is uh, this library right doesn't actually exist in most, I mean, I don't think it exists in any like standard Python installation. So when you try to import like, when you try to import telegram.ext, right, you wouldn't get anything until you actually install the library. So for you to install a third party library, how you will usually do it in Python is you will just run pip install. But since we're on Colab, right, and we're using Google's computers, we can just run this command inside the Colab notebook. Okay, and what it, what it does is it will download the package and it will install it inside the Colab notebook itself. Okay, do you see over here it says successfully installed blah, 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 and Python Telegram bot 13.2, which means we can um, immediately use this package to help us right now. Okay, so um, what was my bot token? My bot token was this. And I'm just going to paste this here. And I'm just going to try this code that I've copied from the whole tutorial just now. Okay, if I were to run this, and then it will tell me the scheduler has started. And it just keeps running, right? It just keeps running because it's waiting for me to send messages and, and stuff, okay? So right now I'm gonna talk to my bot and I'm gonna be like slash start, okay? My bot just replied me, I'm a bot, please talk to me. And then, so what's, what's happening here again? I type slash start, it triggered the command handler, which called the start function, okay? And then the start function, sends me a message to the effective chat ID. What is the effective chat ID? I met, I chat this guy, um, basically it's my personal chat with but the bot, lah, okay? So that's the effective chat ID. And it sent me, I'm a bot, please talk to me. Okay, so what other things that can I do, okay? So over here, I have, I have this message handler. So when I receive a message, it calls the echo function. Okay, do you see that my bot is now echoing everything that I'm saying? Okay, so what's happening here is whenever I send a message and it's not being picked up by this, it's not being picked up by this, it will end up inside this message, message handler and it will call the echo function. And what does the echo function do? The echo function sends a message to myself where the message is the, the message that I sent him. Okay, so it's sending me whatever I send him, which is why it's echoing whatever I say. So for example, I can say things like, hello, have a great day. And you will just reply me the exact same stuff. Okay, then what, what about this caps thingy over here? So this caps is another command. Okay, when I say like slash caps, and I put like, I am very relaxed. Okay, what does it reply me? It replies me in caps, I am very relaxed. And what does it do? It basically just like joins everything you type together and then it just uppercases it and then it sends it to you. Okay, and how did I achieve all this, right? Like I said, it's really just copy pasting every single line of code that I see in this tutorial. Okay, caps handler, you see the caps, caps handler, everything is just copy paste. So, okay, I'm not gonna like waste your time and just read the whole tutorial for you. But you can see it's really very simple with the library to just get started with like building your own commands. 
and building your own um, whatever functions that you want to build. Okay, so right now, suppose if I wanted to change like this message, this I'm a bot, please talk to me, right? I need to press the stop first. Okay, then it will, it will just stop the whole bot. And yeah, right now it stopped running. Then suppose I like put a uh, hi, I'm Chris. And then you run it again, then the bot will run again. Okay, um, slash start. Then right now it says, hi, I'm Chris. Okay, so there's something we need to be very careful about here, which is you shouldn't run like two instances of your bot because if you run two instances, instances of your bot, there'll be two bots trying to like get the updates and then they will sort of like fight with each other and you get a lot of errors. So what I did over here is I added this line of code that says uh, updater.idle, okay? Basically this ensures that I only run one instance of the bot at every one time. But suppose if I were to remove this, okay, I run this. Okay, right now my bot is working. But if I, but now it's, this thing is not, isn't running anymore because like it's not like waiting for me to stop it. But my bot is still running. But if I were to run this again, that means I'll be starting a second instance of my bot. And what happens is it will show me a whole bunch of errors. It says there's a conflict because it got terminated by other get updates requests because there's two bots. They are both running at the same time, trying to subscribe to the same bot and they're all trying to fight with each other. Okay, which is why there's this line over here, updater.idle, which I added, which um, will help you guys to understand this. But this isn't in the, I don't think it's in the original tutorial. So yeah. Oh no, I think it, it is, is it idle? Yeah, uh, basically I have a small paragraph to talk about it, lah, okay? So yeah, so basically um, just, you, so that's like the whole code for your board already. Like your whole board is encapsulated within everything over here. So I have a last challenge for you guys, which is just now remember what we did. We wrote a get cat fact and a get dog fact. And then we also like get a car park availability, right? Okay, I actually provided these functions to all of you guys inside this notebook itself. If I were to run it now, you will see that you are querying all the APIs that we talked about just now. Okay, so right now, what I want you guys to do is I want to add a slash cat command that give me a random cat fact, a slash dog command give me a random dog fact, and a slash car park command that sends me the status of the car park. And uh, we can have the next eight minutes to do that. Okay, and you can just start trying it right now.
if you guys have any questions, feel free to just uh, ask in the chat now. If not, uh, we'll just have like, I guess, uh, five more minutes. Then I will just uh, go through how to very easily do this. Okay, I think we'll just go through in like another two minutes time. Okay, let me just start uh, going through how I, I will do this. Okay, so essentially we have this few functions already available. 
right? So all I need to do is I just need to bring all of them up and just put it here maybe. Um, just put it here. Okay. So right now I, I, I need to like um, have like command handlers for like slash cat and stuff, right? So maybe slash cat. Then I'll call the cat function. Then you have a cat handler. Okay. And we are just going to try the cat thing first. And all I need to do is just, I just need to like copy the start function. And then just name it cat. You can actually, you, you can, just to be clear, you can actually name the functions whatever you want. You can name it like cat ASDF. It's just that over here, you just need to pass it cat underscore ASDF. It doesn't, your, like your function names doesn't have to correspond to like your command name. Okay. So now, right now, instead of saying, saying I'm a bot, please talk to me. You can just put um get cat fact. Is that correct? Get cat fact. Yep. And if I were to run this, it will show me and no, it won't show me an error. Okay, great. Then let's talk to my bot. I type slash cat. And it doesn't work because I didn't import request apparently. So okay. Import request. Okay. And then if I were to run it now, slash cat. Yep, there's a cat fact. Slash cat again. Yeah, another cat fact. Okay. So that's how easy it is to really just add new features to your to your bot. Okay. And just for completeness, I'm gonna do that for like the dog as well. So dog handler dog. Okay, so now the get dog fact should work and I'm not going to test it out because I don't really want to. Um, and then the last one is the car park. Okay, so the car park one, I'm going to try to do something a little bit more interesting here. Car park handler. Okay, so cat, dog and Car park. Get car park availability. Okay. So, okay, I'm just going to test this out first. Like, this is like the base challenge that I said, right? And it should work. Slash car park. Yep. It will tell me that for the specific car park, there's like zero lots and there's 91 total lots. Okay. Um, but right now this is quite dumb, right? Because right now it's just restricted to like that specific car park. Right now it's specific to just HE12. If I want to query other different car parks, suppose you, if I went out with my friends to like eat lunch or something and somehow my friend happened to drive and I want to try a different car park, then this doesn't work anymore. So what I want to do right now, is if I want if I want to change it to like slash car park, for example, if I want to query another car park, if I want to query... Q52 maybe. If I want to write Q52, then it should give me the car park information for Q52. So how do we do that? Over here, what I can do is, um, I'm stopping the board, okay. So over here, there's this thing called context arguments. Essentially every single word that you type after your, your command, right? It's called like, it's like an argument. And we actually want to retrieve to like, the, to retrieve any arguments to see if um, there's like to retrieve basically whatever I type after the, the command actually. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to car park. So I'm going to just get like the car park code. Okay. Then I'll, I'll just do context dot. Okay. Where's the code that I was supposed to copy from? Oh, context dot arcs. Yeah. Context.arx and maybe zero. This should work. Then I need to dot upper it. 
so that I uppercase it. Then I'm going to pass this carpark code inside get carpark availability. Carpark code. Then inside my inside my carpark availability, I'm going to take in a carpark code. And instead of just hard coding HE12, I'm going to put carpark code. Okay, let's try this. I feel like it might not work, but let's try. Slash carpark Q52. <laughs> okay, there's a bug, right? Let me just debug this. Um, carpark data, carpark code. So carpark code will swap into here. Oh, it, it, it actually works. It's just that perhaps that specific car park that I chose didn't really have data. So let's try SMM slash car park SMM. Yep. So for this specific car park SMM, it had multiple lots of type C, type Y, and type H. But because the way I handled the API response, right? I basically printed every single lot of data. That's why you see this long message over here. So yeah, we managed to make our carpark command a lot more flexible and a lot more smarter. Okay. And essentially that's it. We completed our bot. <laughs> All right. So yeah, um, there are very few interesting questions that I want to, that I received from some of you guys that I want to talk about. So essentially somebody asked me, okay, um, when you use bots like uh, SG bus uncle, actually I, I haven't really used that, that bot before, uh, SG bus uncle, then they will like send you like a location of like the bus stop, SG bus uncle. Okay, this bot is quite laggy. Uh. Somehow it's taking so long to reply me. Okay, then you can like, Ask bus how long, then you it basically you will send you like like location and stuff. Uh, so like basically like um she was asking me uh how do you get how do you send a location right? So basically in the Telegram API, there is a method for you to send people's location. Okay, there's this send location method in the Telegram API, which allows you to just put in like the latitude longitude, and you will just end up sending like this pin over here. Um, yeah, and this is available in the Telegram API. It's also available in Python Telegram bot. So you just need to go and read the respective documentation. Okay, then also somebody asked, um, how can we implement a Q&A interaction? So for example, we ask something, then we answer, then the bot will, like you want to answer it, then you can, the bot will reply if it's true or false, right? So there's actually a few ways you can go about doing it. But the way if I would do it is I would use this function called inline keyboard. So quite a while ago, you might see that some bots actually have this very fancy buttons that you can click on. Okay, so it's called an inline keyboard. Basically, when you send a message, then you can like add like this buttons for you to press on. Then when you click on it, then you your code will do something with it. So um, basically, I, I will like do my questionnaire in this. So I will ask a question, then I will ask like, is it true or false? Then depending on what they click, then you will like respond accordingly. Okay, so there's something you can like try out as well. But again, read the API documentation itself because we are not going to cover that today. Okay, back to my slides. So, yep. Uh, where are my slides? My slides are... Okay, so the thing is... um. Yeah, when I first uh, came out with the outline for the workshop, right, I'm sure some of you guys uh, expected to see like cute dog pictures or like dead jokes or like making an API call to NUS mods to figure out if a classroom is occupied at the moment. Uh, I decided to not go through those because I thought that, um, you know, they are not too crucial in like helping you understand the concepts behind building the Telegram bot. But the thing is, I'm, with what you have learned so far, right, if you really wanted to implement them, it's very simple for you to implement them. Just visit these links and you can just go and see how you can do it. Okay. Uh, maybe I just uh, show the NUS Mods API as well. So essentially, like NUS Mods actually exposes this API. Um, yeah, uh, 
for the non NUS friends, uh, yeah, you can NUS mods is like the our timetabling platform. So essentially, you have like you can make API calls over here. So for example, if you wanted to get like all the modules that were, that are available, then they, they, you can make this API, API call. If you wanted to get all the venues, then you can make this API call. Okay. So how I would do this is, uh, for example, if I were to be, if I if I wanted to fetch all the venues for like academic year twenty twenty one, then you see like semesters. Then there will be semester two. Then you see a uh, venues venues dot json. So this is like uh, all the venues that are available in school and you can sort of fetch it with just an API call. Okay, but if you wanted to find out whether a room is available at a certain time or not, then there's this venue information. Okay, basically venue information tells you, okay, for example, at LT15, uh, LT5 or LT9, then at like Tuesday, they, there's certain classes at certain time, start at end time. So you can sort of just use this to sort of like achieve that functionality where you sort of see um, whether a classroom is occupied at the moment or not, just simply with API calls. Okay. This is for you to explore on your own. Uh, okay. So actually, uh, before I move on to this, uh, I just want, want you guys to realize um, how, what will you actually achieve today? Okay. Essentially what you achieve today, you just really built your own Telegram board and I mean, that's obvious, right? But the thing is, building a Telegram bot, we really did show that it's very easy. Um, hang on, let me, where's the third notebook there open? Um, okay, I think I accidentally closed it just now. But you can, I could have just straight up started off with, okay, it's opening up the wrong notebook. Hang on, part. Okay, I could have straight up just started off with this, right? And we would really just be done with the workshop because like the code for us to run our bot is really just this whole chunk over here. And it's really just so simple for us to build a Telegram bot. But the thing is, uh, I just wanted to ensure that you guys know like the fundamentals behind which the bots how we communicate with each other and how we communicate with the bot. And with this knowledge, right, it, it doesn't extend to just Telegram bots. If you wanted to build your own Discord bot, it's the same thing, okay? If you want to build a Discord bot, just look for Discord bot Python. And then you see like a lot of this, a lot of tutorials and there's this discord.py, which is essentially like a wrapper around, you see an API wrapper for Discord, okay? And again, there's like getting started, there's like tutorials and stuff. Just click on it and you and they give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to use it so really um just follow your first principles and le learn how to make api calls how to process data and with just very simple programming knowledge we were able to create something like that that is that might possibly be useful all right so next um i'm sure you realize that during this workshop we use a uh, collab notebooks right and I would say for the workshop itself, it's a good tool because there's no setup required. You can just get started immediately. But the thing is, if you are writing, if you are seriously writing a Telegram bot that you want to like keep it online all the time, right? It will be best if you write your own like Python scripts itself. Okay, I can just show you an, an, an example right now. So uh, one of the bots I made for myself is, uh, okay, I, I basically made this Telegram bot that gives me like trading news, like uh, it looks for stocks information. So my bot itself, right, it's in like this Python script, okay, uh, bot.py. And essentially everything you see here is like, it's like what, it's the same thing as you saw earlier. Okay, same thing as you saw earlier and you have all your updater, dispatcher, command handlers and everything, but they are all just in like its own Python file, okay. Um, and so the, the beauty of using Python is that there's so many libraries to handle so many things, right? And you can sort of just like compose them together. So for example, um, Chris Tong's bot. Yeah, so this is my bot. And if I suppose I wanted to look for like, a, like information about the Apple stock, so I can type slash S-A-P-L. A-P-L is Apple. 
and it will send me the stock information as well as a graph of like the stock price for the past day. So the thing is, uh, how do I do this, right? Uh, it's really just using matplotlib. So a lot of you guys, you all use Python for like data related stuff and you guys use it to plot graphs, right? You can easily just compose it and just using like matplotlib, okay? Matplotlib to get data and you just save like your graph and you just send the graph as like an image. Yeah, so for Telegram bots, right? Uh, I, I hope that you would try and find out and see like what are the type of bots you want to make because the bots that are useful to each and every one of us, it's a very personal thing, right? Like for example, cat facts um, might be use, useless to most of us, but some of us might find it entertaining, right? So I hope the skills that I've learned today will help you to build something that will genuinely be useful for yourself, okay? Then the next thing is, Oh yeah, I also didn't cover how to deploy your Telegram bot, right? Essentially, if your code isn't running, right, your bot doesn't work, okay? Suppose if I were to stop that cell that was running just now, right? If I were to talk to my bot, it would, there will be no response because my code is not responding. It's not sending any, any, any responses. So for bots that you want to keep it online 24-7, right? You can sort of just click read this link to see how you can like deploy it on, on Heroku for free or like... Um, if you want to have like even better uptime, you can just uh, use like a digital ocean server or anything. But that's beyond the scope of this workshop. So this is for you to like find out on your own. Okay. So anyways, hackers, we are recruiting. So we really love spreading hacker culture and we are passionate about it. So of course it's not easy and it takes a lot of effort for us to like organize all the events that we run. But if you are interested in it, uh, sign up for the, the, they can like fill up this form and we'll like arrange for an interview with you to see if like you, for, for you to join us like essentially. Okay. And yeah, so we have really come to the end of the workshop. Uh, okay. Uh, I will send you the link later, Ken. Yeah. Um, we have come to the end of the workshop. It would be great if you could give me some feedback on my teaching. Okay. Um, if you really want to criticize me, okay, I'm the type of guy that, you know, I ask for feedback and I'm really okay with people criticizing me. So if you feel like, I was very unclear in certain parts or like I did certain parts I was like pretty slow. You could just feel free to let me know as well. Okay. Um, yep. Give me some feedback. And of course, uh, if you, if it's our first NUS Hackers event, you can just like um, subscribe to our Telegram channel or the Telegram group. Every time we have a new event, we'll just um, post it there as well. Okay. If you have any other questions, you can feel free to contact us at our email or like email me. That's fine as well. All right, if not, we have reached the end of the workshop. Thanks all of you guys for coming and uh, yeah, have a great weekend.